hi everybody welcome back to my channel today i have for you guys a very very exciting video as i grab my books and that is my poppy war trilogy review um yes i just finished reading this trilogy i've been reading it for the past month and a half and so we're gonna we're gonna do a little review video for you guys today we're gonna do like each individual book and it will be spoiler filled this lovely little review video so just keep that in mind um i plan on leaving little sections per like by the book in the little what is that called i don't know you guys know what i'm talking about so if you want to like read what am i trying to say if you've only read one you can just read one and stop and come back i don't know but i'll section it off for you guys and um, I am going to be giving some overall thoughts just on the series as a whole. And then I'll also be talking about ratings and stuff like that. But um, let's just like get into this video because I have a lot to talk about. So a few trigger warnings just to note generally would be self-harm, um, sexual violence, drug, and in particularly opioid abuse and use. And then um, just very graphic depictions of wounds and gore and um, atrocities and war atrocities. So just be aware. Um, some overall thoughts. I rounded up all my ratings that I gave each book and overall this series would be like a 4.25 out of five stars. Um, the main reason it's not higher just in general is for a couple of reasons so one of the things I noticed straight away about these books was the writing um, the writing was not personally my favorite style of writing um, I found her word usage to be a little odd in some places and um, just like the cadence would feel a little off sometimes and it would drag me out of the story at certain moments. Um, and then another reason why the series isn't higher is just the pacing. I feel like especially the first two books was a little rocky. Um, we spent a lot of time on certain things but glazed over other things that I would have liked to see or maybe would have added more to my personal reading experience. So those are the main two reasons why it might seem like I rated these a little lower. One of my favorite things about this series overall was the combination of history and fantasy. As a history buff, I really enjoyed kind of seeing how she welded the two together and I felt like she did a really good job of keeping things distinct while also keeping it unique to the story. Um, I also really enjoyed my favorite thing probably of all the books just in general was Ren and Kate's relationship and friendship. Um, the platonic soulmates really was captured perfectly I feel like in the series. Um, I loved them. They were amazing and I loved watching them grow and well grow um, just as their characters developed and how they developed and broke apart from each other. Um, I also really, I can't really say enjoyed, but I feel like she did a really good job depicting the realities of war and what war can do to a country and not just one country, but multiple countries. It doesn't just affect, you know, the acting parties, it ripples out and the effects on the civilians and the soldiers and the generals and just everyone involved. I feel like she did a really good job depicting some of the more gruesome aspects and just realistically what war is like, um, at least from my knowledge of it. So anyway, those were my overall thoughts. We're gonna get into the individual books themselves now. Um, so we're going to start with The Poppy War, which was the first book in the trilogy. Um, I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. It's definitely, looking back, 
my least favorite. It was still really good. I enjoyed it. Um, in particular, I really liked the setting at Synagogue or um, in the school atmosphere. I really love like an academic setting and I also really love trials. It's just one of my favorite tropes and she had to undergo trials and like competition at the academy and I really love just a competitive scholarly atmosphere and I feel like she did a really good job um, capturing that. I also really enjoyed Ren's character and her uniqueness. Um, that's one of the things that drew me and I think a lot of other people to this series is how unique the main character is and her status as kind of an anti-hero protagonist. Um, I feel like from the beginning you really see how Ren is unapologetically power hungry, which a part of me really respects. Um, and I also think she's unique because in a lot of fantasy series, the in particular girl protagonist is usually like thrust into power or like it's almost like they're cursed with magic or their abilities or however they come to be in power. And it's almost like they resent it but in this series, Rin actively sought out the gods and shamanism and her powers in order to become more powerful. And so I felt like that was a really interesting aspect, especially in the first book and in looking back on how it kind of all goes together. Um, also in this book, again, Rin and Kate's relationship, just their youthfulness and kind of finding each other and their camaraderie in this atmosphere that they were both kind of uncomfortable and outsiders in. I also really enjoyed Rin and Neza. Um, I know there's not, there's not a romance and people kind of like place more emphasis on their relationship than I feel like was actively portrayed, at least in Rin's point of view in this series. But I did like the rivalry between them and I thought it was really, um, interesting and fast paced and created a lot of tension. Um, I will say in this one, probably the reason why it's my least favorite is because when we we're first greeted with the shamanism and the idea of their religion and how you reach the gods, all of that really confused me, especially during her, during Rin's lessons with her master. It just, the whole explanation threw me for a loop and um I never really fully wrapped my mind around it I got through the rest of the series okay and like I kind of understood but at least in this one it was really confusing and daunting to me just the entire concept and maybe I'm just really stupid and couldn't understand it or visualize it but that was a really big disconnect for me from at least this first book um, another thing, I think the last thing I'll mention about this book, I really did like how Rin fit into the psyche. Am I saying that right? I've, I've read it as psyche. It could be psych. I'm saying psyche. And her relationships with Ramza and Altan, Altan, Altan. And just how she grapples with knowing other people who are powerful are out there. And um, yeah, I really liked all her relationships really. Or at least like I didn't like them, but I liked seeing her interact with other people. Anyway, moving on to the second book, Dragon Republic. I gave this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Um, I did like this one better. It still wasn't like quite to a 4.5 and the main reason for that was again the pacing and also there were like a few inconsistencies with this one and like some things that like for example for example in this one Nezha 
they're on the offensive and they like planned this big strategy and Nez has like in his own group and I think he was in the forest and Ren says at one point like I think they attacked the forest I can't remember there was she was openly and explicitly questioning whether or not Nessa was alive and where he was and then we didn't really hear about him for a couple of chapters and I got the impression she genuinely thought he was dead and then the next thing I know he's at a meeting and it's like well <laughs> how do we get from point A to point B like where what was lost in translation I expected there to be like a big reunion or like her to at least mention oh they found him and maybe she did and I just didn't catch it but I was really confused when he just showed back up and then in addition to that I feel like there was a little and this was also throughout other books too but I feel like some characters just kind of flit in and out like we would go many chapters without hearing about the rest of the psyche or other side characters that I was interested in and then and it turn she'd turn around and there they be and I'd be like well, why weren't they mentioned and maybe part of that is because Ren is an unreliable narrator which I'll talk about with the burning god but it just felt really kind of odd to me However, I really did like that in this one there wasn't a lot of recap because I hate when series, when I'm reading a series back to back to back, they there's like the first 100 pages is all recap. I find that really frustrating and makes me mad. So I liked that we didn't get a whole lot of that. Um, I also really liked the exploration of Rin's relationship with opium addiction and kind of how she navigates it. And how she uses it to her advantage and how it's also a weakness for her. Um, that was an interesting aspect of this book and the series in general. Um, looking at my notes, I really liked one of my favorite moments was when Ren took Altan's, Altan's trident and melted it down into swords that better suited her. I felt like that was a really powerful girl boss moment and she really reclaimed some of her identity that she kind of lost along the way. Um, also throughout this book and then in The Burning God too, I really not enjoyed. I thought it was fascinating how Rin, she was an anti-hero, there's no doubt about it, but she was never all entirely evil. She was never completely without remorse or guilt she constantly battled her guilt and just reckoning with her actions but she also on the other hand recognized that if she had the same choices again she would make the same decisions and she was very open about that but I did like that that didn't mean she was without remorse and that she was I mean, she was callous in some moments, but her heart wasn't shut off from feeling things for the people she directly hurt and killed. Um, I really liked the direction Ren and Kate's relationship went in this one. Um, just their bonding and then the anchoring I felt like was a really unique aspect and especially in how the more Ren used her powers, the more Kate suffered. I feel like that was a really big balm to her um, ambitions and what she would have done otherwise. I really found it fas fascinating also how Ren identified as a soldier for first and foremost for like, especially in this book, I think she said numerous times like, this is the only thing I have. This is who I am. This is what I'm good at. This is the the part of me that is the most um influential was her being a soldier and I feel like in wartime a lot of that gets lost and especially in fantasy books it's like they don't want to be a soldier they'd rather do anything else but Ren like that was who she was at her core and she wanted to be told what to do she wanted to follow at least a few um, commands and she found 
not peace exactly, but she found who she was in being a soldier. Um, the ending, I really broke my heart that Masaki died, especially Ramza. I was like, not him too. <laughs> um, I wasn't like that surprised Ness had betrayed her, but when he stabbed her in the back, literally, I was like, oh, it was literal, this um, betrayal. And off that note, another thing I enjoyed about this book was seeing Rin and Nezha's relationship as it changed from this really immature schoolhood, schoolhood, schoolyard um, rivalry into something that was really complicated as a friendship and kind of seeing them love each other kind of platonically, but also recognizing that they have some insurmountable differences um, which prohibit them from ever truly being at peace with each other. So yeah, there's the Dragon Republic. Mm. Um, the Burning God. The book I finished yesterday. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's my favorite. I feel like the writing and the pacing was the best in this one and I just was the most invested for this story in this particular book. Um, okay, I'm still like reeling from this ending. So basically I had a pretty good idea of where the story would go. I always thought she would die. Um, I figured she would kill herself and sacrifice for something. Um, I predicted that Nezha was going, or not Nezha, Kate was going to be killed and he would sever their bond before he died and then that would kind of send her over the edge. I was wrong. Um, but I was so fixated and confident in my predictions that the ending like completely took me by surprise. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's just, let's discuss. Um, and this one, I really enjoyed learning more about the trifecta and seeing the parallels and the connections between the trifecta and Rin Kite and Nezha and kind of how history repeats itself. Um, going off of that, I really was disappointed in how the trifecta died. I actually was pretty convinced until like the last 10 pages that at least one of them was going to come back and be trouble, but I guess they were dead. Um, I just felt really unsatisfied with how these three powerful and um, personable characters just kind of died. Um, and then I also really enjoyed what was I going to say? Um, seeing Rin and Kite kind of deal with this new warfare and how to navigate it and how to be successful. I thought it was also kind of on the same vein. I thought it was nice. It was interesting to see Rin reclaiming the South and acting as a general um, and kind of struggling with her roots and her identity as a southern commander and liberator um i really like towards the middle and end of the book ren teaching shamanism to others and her kind of cultivating the same experiences she went through and how she kind of um recognized the faults and how she was taught and then also understood why she was taught the way she was and kind of seeing it from go full circle. Um, I really enjoyed the, or I really liked how she depicted the aftermath of Rin winning because I feel like in a lot of fantasies they just win and then it ends and then the epilogue might be like a couple of sentences about how they're rebuilding and the new world but this one spent a lot of time towards the end of the book on how hard it was for them to actually rebuild 
and they didn't really have the resources or the knowledge to rebuild properly and yet Ren refused to give up her um, her win and her pride. Well, at least until the end, anyway. Um, and also in the same vein, well, I kind of already talked about that. And then also towards the end, just Ren's rapid descent into paranoia and mania and um, just the deterioration of her mental stability was really interesting. And it hit me as I was reading it, how unreliable she actually was as a narrator throughout like the entire series, um, which I think is really interesting because she has such a strong personality. She's, she was definitely not a, um, like a separated narrator, I don't think. I feel like it was very tied to her emotions and her ability to grapple with things. Um, so that was really interesting to kind of recognize and see how it played out. Going off of that, her turning on Kate, oh, I was sobbing. Um, I knew before I read this that this one was supposed to be like just terrible. I mean, I'm pretty sure the dedication's like to my fans who came with a bucket for your tears. Um, it was accurate. I did not expect to cry like I did, but once Ren and Kate turned on each other, I was a mess. I was gone. Um, it broke my heart to see my favorite little, little guys fighting and, um, hating each other like they did, but also really loving each other. And, um, so I also, I, I liked that Ren chose not to hurt Kate. And like, when he said, you're hurting me, that's when she kind of realized what she was doing and who she was doing it to. And they had refused to ever physically hurt each other. And I just feel like the platonic soulmates really stood out at the end and they both died together. And um, I also really thought it was interesting that Ren finally put her own self-interests and desires for power aside and did what was in theory best for her country and her people. And she kind of understood that she was not going to be the right leader or the best leader. And I felt like that was really a good line for her arc to end on. And um, I feel like the ending was, it wasn't what I expected, but I do feel like looking back, it was very fitting. So that's that. Um, I've been with these characters for a month and a half. It took me over two weeks to read each book. Um, so I've been immersed in this world for a long time. Um, I will probably reread this in the future. I really enjoyed it looking back. Um, definitely not a lighthearted <laughs> trilogy and definitely not filled with romance, which is what I'm used to, but it was good nonetheless. And I'll return to it in the future. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this spoiler filled review. Um, I'll see you next time. I can't really do my little thing, so peace out, goodbye in the video.